Okay, let's get started with the second part of lecture three. We left off with uh, logging in and logging out, and that the part that's uh, or the procedure that's shown in the book is not exactly what we will see when we use the live DVD. So, what exactly do we see when we use the live DVD? You take your DVD. And you and you insert it into a um, um, regular PC, and what I have is something slightly different. But you'll see the same kind of thing. You'll see this splash screen, I hope, and you can hit enter or it'll time out. It's you can see right here. It's counting down. I think um, 30 seconds but you can hit enter to speed up the process and here you should see something like this some of those other things you should not see because I'm running in a special environment um, but you should see this message Ubuntu 12.04 or something like that and then eventually when the system is booting up, finally you should see something like this. Okay. So you didn't have to log in. The system sort of just comes up and, it, and you've got a graphical user interface. So this live DVD has a nice graphical user interface. The other thing that we will use, which is a server, that doesn't have a nice graphical user interface. Okay, so what can you do? You might want to check out the browser. There's free software that does basically the same thing as Microsoft Word, or Microsoft Excel in this case, or PowerPoint, those kinds of things. Plus there's tons of other things. We won't, we won't look at a whole lot of this, a lot of the features of Ubuntu really. We are mainly just interested in setting up um, a window that we can use as a shelf. So what I did was I clicked on this dash symbol and I, I'm going to type in terminal but I don't have to go that far. Just type term. There's a bunch of different possibilities. I'm going to choose this one. This works best for me. Okay, so this gives us essentially what, would, what uh, we would get if we were to log in. To the system we would get a prompt like this and that's what um, the book was the text in the book was leading up to so eventually if you were to go back to text the textbook it said that you log in and then what happened was that you would get a shell prompt or a prompt to enter a command and that's what you would get if you were to log into a Unix system as shown in the textbook. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this system. So right now what we have here with this dollar sign is it's waiting for us to type in something. I'm not sure you can see this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Might be a little bit better. I'm going to try one more. I hope this works. Okay. So you should be able to see that. You get the dollar sign and then a blinking cursor it basically tells you that um, this thing is waiting for you to type in something. Okay, so what can you do? You can do an ls command. So I type in ls. It looks like a 1, but it's not. It's an L followed by an S. What that does is list all the files in your in the current place that you are in, your, in the file system. Okay, so there's a bunch of things in this location and they have different colors depending on what kinds of things they are. Most of them are this light blue. Uh, that means they are directories or folders. It's what you would call them in Windows. 
this cyan um, text means that this is a shortcut or a link. It's called a link in in uh, Linux. And how can I do? How can I? How do you know that? Well, you can type in ls space and then an option minus l. What this tells us is more information about each one of these things. So all of these blue things, you can see towards the left end, they show up with a D. That means it's, these are directories. And the only exception is the very first thing. It shows up with an L, stands for link or shortcut. And that says that this looks like a folder, but it's not. It's actually a link to a folder. And this is where the actual folder is. OK. So what do you have to remember from this? Just these two things, that you can type in a command, and you don't have to remember what exactly what LS does. You will remember it over the course of the semester. In the next couple of weeks, you will remember what LS means. LS lists all the files in your current location. LS minus L implies that you're using the long option that means that you you want everything listed out in long form and so you get a bunch of information here okay so I just want to show you those two commands it's actually the same command I'm just showing you options that you can use there are many other options with LS let's take a quick one more command one command that you can type in is man and by itself it doesn't do anything but when you say man and then the name of another command like ls for example you get what's called a man page so man ls means give me the manual page for ls so I'm gonna hit enter and there it is so ls it gives you a name ls me the name ls stands for list directory contents Here's how you would use them, uh, use, this, uh, use these commands. You type in the command name and then various options. Usually they have a single minus sign and then a letter. Or you can use the more complicated, more verbose style. You can say minus, minus, all. They're, these are the same. Most of the time we will just use minus A. It's just simpler. And then you can actually give uh, other things like name of a file and you can list the details of for example just one particular file sometimes that's handy you don't want to see all 200 files you just want to see one particular file okay so notice that you're in this mode where it's not obvious where you're gonna type anything or type the next thing so what's happened is this manual page has taken over this terminal and so now you have to hit the space bar to, to page down. I'm going to keep hitting the space bar. Or if you get tired and you're not sure exactly where this is going to end, you can always type in Q. So either the space or the Q. Those are the kinds of things you want to press when you get into a situation like that. Okay. So you saw man ls. You saw what that does. It takes over the screen, gives you a description of the ls command, things like that. All right, now let's go back to the notes for just a tiny bit. Okay. So we'll skip all the stuff about passwords, all of these things. Password p a s s w d is just a command. And now let's look at basic command line structure. So this is the, one of the main things you want to get from this lecture. Is each command has a name. So you type it in f right after the system prompt or the shell prompt. This is called this prompt. Just means just means that uh, the system is prompting you to enter something. You type in the command. You don't type in command C O M M A N D. That, that doesn't mean anything. Whenever you see square brackets, it means these things are optional. It means you don't have to type them in. Sometimes you get more information when you type them in. So you can, for example, we did an ls. 
without the minus L and then we did it with the minus L. We could have also typed in other things like names of files or folders or directories as they're called in Linux. Okay, so this is the general structure. We will look at many commands, um, but just remember that this is the main structure. Command, name, bunch of options, and then a bunch of arguments. Not every command will have options. Not every command will have arguments. And so these two things are often optional. All right.